Last example, a ball of putty with a mass of one kilogram is about to fall on your head at velocity initial equal to negative five meters per second. Makes sense, it's falling down. So which one's gonna hurt worse? It lands and sticks on your head, so it lands and it hits and its final velocity is zero, or it bounces off of your head with a velocity final equal to four meters per second. Let's call these cases, we'll call them A and we'll call them B. So in case A, it bounces off of your head, no sorry, Opposite of that, in case A, it hits your head and it sticks in place. In case B, it bounces off of your head. Which one of those is going to hurt worse? Well, normally we think of things that are bouncy as being good. They're easy, right? You, you wouldn't be bothered by a, you know, a super ball being dropped, off of your, dropped on your head and bouncing off your head because it wouldn't hurt much. But what's really going on? Which one's taking more force? The super ball that hits your head and just sort of sticks there or the super ball that hits your head and ricochets right off? Well, we can break this down with physics and math. So in both cases, what, what is really going to be defined as hurting? Well, the way that we define hurt is probably the amount of force that is exerted on you. You'd rather have two newtons of force get shoved on you than a billion newtons of force get shoved on you. A billion newtons of force suddenly apply to you and your body's going to turn into a pancake. Things are not going to look good for you. But two newtons of force, you're going to be able to take it. Small amounts of force are going to hurt less than large amounts of force. So what we're looking for is which one of these cases is going to produce less force on impact. So in both of these cases, it's going to be important to know how long the ball is contacting your head to be able to figure out what that average force has to be. So the impact time for both of them will be 0.25 seconds. So let's figure out how much force is involved. So to do that, we'll need to figure out what the impulse in both cases are. So to do that, we're going to need to know what the initial velocity, sorry, initial momentum is and what the final momentum is. From there, we'll be able to figure out the impulse. And with impulse, we can pretty easily get what the force is. So in both of them, we're going to need to know what is that initial momentum. Initial momentum is going to be the mass, 1, times the initial velocity, negative 5. So we've got negative 5 kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so case A, it lands and sticks on your head. So its velocity final is equal to 0. So if that's the case, what's the final momentum? Well. Still mass of 1, but now it sticks, so it has no velocity at the end, so it's got a momentum of 0 in the end, right? 0 kilograms times meters per second. Compare that to B, where we've got a final momentum which is equal to 4, uh, sorry, so we've got a final momentum that's equal to a mass of 1 kilogram times 4 meters per second. So it's got four kilograms times meters per second. So it might say, make sense at this point to go, okay, the one with less change in the momentum is the second case, B, because we go from five to four. But that's not the case, right? The whole case is we go from negative five to four. So which is a bigger change, going from negative five to zero or from negative five to four? So we check that out. We get change in momentum is equal to the final minus the initial. So positive 5 kilograms times meters per second is what it is for A. In B, whoops, we don't need to write B again, change in momentum is going to be equal to 4 minus a negative 5, so we get 9 kilograms times meters per second. So there's more change in momentum in case B than in case A. So it's going to make more sense for B to hurt because that force to change that momentum is going to have to come from somewhere. We've got a constant time, so it's got to be that the amount of force involved is going to have to be more in case B. Now, we'll, we'll finish this out, but at this point we can see that the answer has got to be it's going to hurt more in case B. So J, our impulse, is equal to the force times the time, but we also know that J is equal to the change in momentum. So for case A, we've got 5 is equal to the force times that time, which is 0.25 seconds. We divide both sides by 0.25 seconds, alternately multiply both sides by 4, and we get 20 is equal to the force. So 20 newtons is how much force you wind up undergoing for A. Now, how much force do you wind up undergoing in B? Well, the impulse is equal to the force times the time again. So the change in uh, change in momentum is the impulse, so we've got 9 is equal to that force times 0.25. So 36 newtons is equal to the force in part B. 
So part B winds up putting more force on your head. In both these cases, they're pretty small, so worst case, you're gonna have a little bit of a headache, but 36 newtons is more force to have to suffer than 20 newtons, so it'd actually be better to have an object that lands on your head and just sticks there, something that goes splat than something that goes boing. If something goes boing, that force to make it bounce off is going to have to come from somewhere. And if it's coming from your head, that's going to make it hurt more. It's better to have it land and splat and have less force because it has to change its momentum if it's going to be able to bounce off your head. All right, I hope this lesson made sense. I hope you got a good understanding of linear momentum because the next thing that's coming is conservation of momentum and that's where the real importance of momentum is. All right, thanks.